All right, I'm gonna do something I've never done before, and that's a guitar collection video. Um, it's almost the end of the year, so I figured it'd be cool to make this video to kind of document what I have at the end of 2022. Um, as you'll notice, you won't see some guitars that's been on my channel because I'm always buying, selling, and trading all the time. So I don't have some of them anymore. And maybe I have some that you haven't seen on the channel. So uh, this will be kind of cool. I'll make each guitar brief because I don't want it to be an hour long video. But uh, let's get started on these guitars. Okay, starting off, we'll start off with this guy here. This started out as a 2003. Ibanez 1570 Prestige. It was in silver. I uh, sanded it down and I swirl dipped this myself. I painted the pickups. These are DiMarzio Evolutions. Um, original, you know, edge system that came on it. Uh, these are stickers for the inlays. Um, yeah, I did this probably in 2013 or 2014. I did this. I've had it ever since. Plays great. Um, but yeah, that's uh, might make some videos with this guitar soon. But yeah, this is a completely. I did all this myself. Dr dremeled this out. Took uh, a lot longer than I like to admit. But uh, yeah, this Ibanez Steve Vai tribute I did is the first guitar. All right, next we'll just stick with Ibanez and do this one. This is a 1989. Prestige 15 or 570 before they added the one in front um, The first year they ever made this guitar. I picked this up at a pawn shop for like 150 bucks Like in 2010 probably it's all beat up And it's what you would call a real relic here, <laughs> but I did switch out the um, the trim on it was so rusted out I used it for a little bit. I just replaced it with a Floyd Special, which I'd like to put an edge back in there one day. It's got a DiMargio, uh, I mean, sorry, a Seymour Duncan JB and a Duncan Design Invader in there. But yes, yeah, it's a cool guitar. It's, it's got that uh, natural distress look, which is kind of cool. Yeah, this one plays good as well. Just uh, one of them pawn shop steals from years ago. This is a 2019 EC1000 Deluxe in Blue Natural Fade. Um, this had the Plex job from, from Sweetwater. Plays really, really great. Um, this is one of the two EC1000s I have. Has Seymour Duncan Pegasus Sentient in the neck there. Slittable. Yeah, this guitar just uh, plays and sounds plays and sounds really great so uh, I love EC 1000s and this one's gonna be around for a while here's my other EC 1000 this is a 2018 uh, Guitar Center exclusive spalted maple EC 1000 deluxe uh, it came with the MG 8185s in it uh, it now has the Mick Thompson signature set of empties in there and uh, by Seymour Duncan, um, it's got a, this one's got a five-piece neck. This is real. I mean, it's really great. I mean, it. I have no complaints at all. Matching headstock with the spalted maple, the red over top, translucent red. Yeah, this is a great guitar as well. Can't go wrong with an EC one thousand. Promise you. This is my Warren D. Martini Charvel, the Bloody Skulls, um, 2022 model. It has the Warren D. Martini signature Seymour Duncan in there, top mounted Floyd, made in Mexico, maple neck with the skunk stripe on that. Um, just a great guitar, love the graphic, I think it looks very, very cool, and um, super happy with this. like to get the... Uh, Snake skin one one day to go with it, but there's the uh, Warren. This is my 2018 Van Halen 2 guitar, um, EVH. 
100% stock. It's got the EVA 12th gang pickup, top mount of flow with the D-Tuna. Maple neck. It's a two-piece maple neck because it does not have the skunk stripe. Now this actually was originally owned by my dad. And he had it for about a year, a year or two, and then I traded him up for it. Um, he's not much of a Floyd player, so I traded him a hardtail guitar for this. But uh, yeah, this is a cool guitar. And I really like it a lot. It's going to be sticking around. Here we have a Jackson JS model dinky. Um, my dad gave this to me. It didn't work. The pickups that were in it sounded really bad and it wasn't wired up properly. Um, so I threw in a set of, these are Schecter Super Rock pickups that came in my Snow Leopard, which we'll see later in the video. Threw those in there. Deleted one of the knobs. Three-way. Yeah, fixed it up. It, it plays pretty good now. Not too bad for a cheap guitar. But, uh, yeah, just a cool little project I did. This is my 2022 Gibson Les Paul Tribute in Tobacco Burst. Um, USA made, of course. Uh, I'm really, really blown away by how good of a Les Paul this is. I've had four and five thousand dollar customs well like a custom a standard traditional and some studios and this one right here just plays the best of any of them I've had so couldn't recommend getting one of these enough if you want that last Paul and not want to break the bank uh, definitely a good value for money pick right here uh, I'm sure you'd be satisfied with it if you picked one of these up but yeah that's the uh and I, I wanted the tobacco burst because I'm a big Ace Fraley fan. So this kind of reminded me of the first Fraley Deluxe that he had back in the 74 and 75. So that's why I wanted the tobacco burst. But uh, yeah, just a really cool guitar. This is my Jackson KE3 made in Japan. I think a 2010 model around that time. Ordered it straight from a music store, local music store in 2010 or 11. I think it was 10. Um, for my love of Marty Friedman. If anybody knows, Marty Friedman always played Kelly's back in the Megadeth days. But this was kind of a dream guitar for me at the time. So it uh, has some sentimental value to me. I, I did switch out the, the Jackson branded Floyd. I mean, it's a Floyd special. But it's still better than that. You know, Jackson Floyd that had stays in tune great. Other than that, it's all stock. And uh, I just had a restring video of this that I posted a couple days ago. So if you want to check that out, how to set up a Floyd, that's on here. But yeah, that's my Made in Japan Jackson Kelly. All right, this one might take a little bit to explain what it is and where it came from. This is a basically a just a parts guitar at, the, at this point. Um, the body originally, I ordered it brand new. It was a trans black DK2 made in Japan that I ordered probably six months after I ordered that Kelly from the same music store, bought a brand new. Um, had it for a while. It, it had the bound fretboard. If you notice, this is a non bound fretboard. I'll get, or a neck, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, had it for a little bit. I sold it to a buddy that lived local here. Uh, he had it for about a year. He played it. Uh, I guess he played it with a, a big belt on. It had a really bad buckle rash. So his dad worked at an automotive shop painting. So he had his dad paint the guitar sparkly blue. Um, and But he never put it back together. He, he hit me up after that. And that's why I wanted to buy it back off of him. But it was in parts. And uh, his dad had painted it. So I got a really good deal on it <clears throat> to get it back. I wasn't a big fan of the blue sparkle paint job. So I ended up sanding it off and I did this Bengal Tiger paint job myself. Um, just using spray cans. It's not perfect. It's a, you know, has a lot of imperfections in it, but I think it turned out pretty good for just somebody doing it at home with uh, some rattle cans. 
the neck is actually off of a Japanese, and the hardware, it's off a Japanese uh, warrior that I had, W, you know, RX warrior that was trans red ahead of time. I switched the necks off because I thought the neck would look better bound on the warrior. And then I no longer have that. So this is kind of a a Jackson Frankenstrat, if you will. It's got a Seymour Duncan designed invader and then a regular Seymour Duncan uh, single coil in it. But I guess it's a cool guitar. It's uh, my 80s type guitar. But uh, yeah, that's that one.